Antibiotics are drugs that are designed to treat various infectious diseases such as pneumonia and bronchitis which are caused by bacteria. These drugs work by killing the bacteria that causes the infectious disease through various means. The concerning issue with antibiotics in recent decades is the ability of infectious bacteria to acquire multi-drug resistance to set of antibiotics. There are four ways that bacteria can become resistant to antibiotics. The first is drug inactivation or modification, meaning that the bacteria produce an enzyme that is able to chemically destroy the antibiotic or render it inert. The second is alteration of the antibiotic's target site. For example, if a drug targets an enzyme, that enzyme could mutate in such a way that the antibiotic will no longer work, but it will retain its function. The third is a change in the bacteria's metabolism. Here, bacteria will mutate to use a different set of building blocks to give the same product. Finally, the last way bacteria can acquire antibiotic resistance is by pumping the drug out of the cell before it gets a chance to work. For instance, erythromycin is an antibiotic that stops the growth of bacteria by shutting down bacterial protein production mechanism. If a specific strain of bacteria has resistance to the antibiotic erythromycin, the bacteria is most likely to be resistant to other antibiotics of the same class and other classes of antibiotics that target bacterial protein synthesis, thereby acquiring multi-drug resistance. In order to overcome the growing challenge of multi-drug resistant bacteria, new classes of antibiotics need to be discovered. Basic laboratory research leads to the discovery of novel compounds that can be used as antibacterial agents. Before the drug becomes available for the public, however, years of basic research and clinical trials need to be conducted. These research initiatives require federal funding in order to provide the resources needed to conduct research, and that would lead to the discovery of new antibiotics. All right, uh, Dr. Hoffman, how, uh, or what is it exactly that you do here in your lab at UVA? Well, my laboratory at UVA is engaged in basic research on two microorganisms, Helicobacter pylori and Legionella neurophila. One causes stomach ulcers, and the other is causing pneumonia. We, at the same time, have a parallel program going in developing new therapeutic agents uh, against uh, many of the many the drug-resistant pathogens, like Staph aureus and Clostridium difficile, and these Klebsiella pneumonia that are carbapenem resistant. And how are you? How is your lab funded? We're pretty fortunate to be funded well by the National Institutes of Health and we're hopeful maybe in the future to see some private money coming in from industries and, and from uh, maybe sources like that that might be able to keep us going. One of our grants is a, a U01 grant which is like a multi-investigator thematic type grant and that's what's covering the entire antibiotic development program through the auspices of biodefense. So even though you're trying to seek private money, how important does federal funding play in your ability to do research? It plays a critical role because it's, it's uh, antibiotic discovery is very high risk and very few venture capitalists or anyone is willing to give you money to do something that you're going to fail at. And so the, the, uh, the federal government is probably the best suited for giving money to what some people laughingly say are lost causes, but basically antibiotic discovery is not anymore going to be done by big pharma. It's going to be done by universities and by small biotech companies. And in the university it's safe because you can publish your failure as an industry, you're fired for not making a drug. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the key to developing antibiotic, uh, the antibiotics that will fight resistant organisms is federal funding and not through the private sector. That's right. All right, and how do you think the current state of federal funding for antibiotics is? Is it, is it poor? Is it hitting right where it needs to be or can it be improved? Well, on a scale of one to ten, it's probably a two and a half to three. <laughs> it's, it's probably the worst it's ever been. And, and, and the whole 
structure of, of federal funding, even though the, the amounts of money there are in the billions of dollars, the numbers of research laboratories, the number of investigators, and just the sheer dimension of medical research is huge. And, and so it's the success rate on grants and chair and sit on several study sections. So I see this as like four or five grants out of 100 are getting funded. And maybe 60 of those grants are excellent grants, you know, the excellent ones only maybe four or five are being funded. So that's uh, meaning very, very good people, very good programs are not getting funded. And, and the other kind of issue with with competition for scarce funding is that all small businesses, which includes all biotech companies, are eligible to apply for grants. And so many biotech companies also compete for scarce resources rather than develop a pro product from like venture capital funded uh, research. Uh, and many of these companies may never produce a product, but they will continually be funded by the NIH for their entire existence. And so there's a very steep competition right now for scarce funding. And given our, our I guess, toolbox of antibiotics, how long will this last us against uh, bacteria that we face without any sublimation uh, from research? Well, there are two good reviews in the area, and both of them are depressing because, one, the the pace of drug multi drug resistance is is getting faster and faster, and the pace at the discovery and bringing to clinic new chemical entities as therapeutic agents is at less than a trickle coming out of the pipe, maybe a drop of an hour or something instead of a floodgate. So so we're almost in a perfect storm of having nothing to treat infections. And with these carbapenem resistant uh, gram negatives right now in hospitals, there's almost nothing, uh, no alternatives for treating these infections. And if, you don't, if you're immune compromised, your mortality rate is going to be about 35 percent of these infections. And you know, there's nothing physicians can do except have a positive bedside manner. It's not good. In conclusion, the threat of antibiotic resistance is very real. Real. While measures can be taken to prevent the spread and formation of antibiotic resistant bacteria, one of the best steps that can be taken in fighting so-called superbugs is the creation of new antibiotics made possible by federal funding.